Hello guys, Lone Vic here with another how to play video. Today it's Dinosaur Island Roar and Right came to me like yesterday in a package together with the Dinosaur World Kickstarter. It's fresh, it's new and I've already had a few solo games in and I would like to right now explain to you how to play this great roll and ride game. Uh, for one to four players, one, one to four players, that should take around 30, 45 minutes. And without further ado, let's take a look how to set up the game, how to play a normal game, and what changes are there with the solo rules. Here we go. Okay, so first we have the setup. Each player should get a set of two of these park sheets, and you should place the board on this, in the center of the table. You take the 10 dice that you have with the game and whoops, and you throw them into this really cool embroidered baggie that you get inside with the game as well. So here we go, 10 of those. You mix it up and you leave them be for now. The first player marker goes to any player you decide right now, but I will be doing a solo playthrough. So this marker goes somewhere where I am basically. And then you have the main board of the game. You should take the building cards that you have, the blue ones, give them a good shuffle and distribute three of those into the three spaces. And the rest goes back to the box. So you'll be only using three each game. So I've got the main gate, for example, the deluxe break room and the first aid hut. You do the same for the employees cards. You shuffle them up and you distribute three. So an architect, a ride operator and a mad scientist. Note that both the architect and the mad scientist as the first aid hut and the main gate have this little purple symbol. I will show it to you closer here. This one here, which means that these are more uh, difficult cards and they should be removed from those decks for a first game, for a teaching game, but I will leave them as they are. Next you take the round marker and place them, place it on the first area of round one and then you have to do some adjustments on these boards before you start the game. I'll take my blue pen, it should be easier. First, you give each player one basic DNA of each color. So as you can see, one yellow, one red and one blue on those first three rows and you match the DNA, mark the DNA that you have by making circles here and then you'll be crossing them out or blanking them out when you use them up. And then you have these building areas, A, B, C, corresponding to these three cards and the worker areas or specialist areas connected to A, B, C, those three specialists. You look at the prices for the buildings, eight, six and eight, and you blank out the spaces so that the amount of spaces left in field A is 8, the amount in field B is 6, and in field C it's 8. So the prices right now on these areas are corresponding to the prices of these buildings. And you do the same for the specialists. So specialist A costs me 3, and I've got 5 areas here, so I should blank out these two, then we've got uh, all of them cost three. So that's an easy um, change. Okie dokie. And this is what you do in order to start the game. Now we are set up and we're ready to start. Okay, so guys, now let's explain how this game works. I will be explaining a game playing a, like a single player setup, but uh, I will give you the rules for the single player game a bit later because it involves the single player AI deck, so uh, we'll get back to this. But every player performs basically the same actions, so it shouldn't be a problem if I'm explaining this on this setup that I have here right now in front of me. Okay, so let's start with the key concepts in the game. Now, we've got a few types of resources, which are the DNA, and they are divided into the basic DNA, 
and the advanced DNA, the three bottom ones. So we got basic yellow, red and blue and green, purple and orange are the advanced ones. We've got coins as a resource and coins can be obtained from actions or from dice and or from buildings and every single time you get a coin you can either spend it automatically in order to fill in any of the spaces on buildings or employees here or here and these as you can see have a coin symbol here and when you cross out all of those fields you make a tick next to the employee or the building may, meaning that you have this building already uh, or you can place coins in storage by placing a circle here in this space and those coins can be used later and you then cross them out but you can only store five coins throughout the whole game so that's not much and if you've got those five spaces already filled with coins or cross out coins you can't store any more coins the next idea the next resource is security which is marked with these padlocks and anytime you collect security you go here and you make a circle in a square meaning that this is your security level so you collect those security levels and then you'll be able to collect threat which will place dots into those circles meaning how much threat you have if the dots at any time are appearing in squares which don't have any circles because your security is too low you will get some deaths in the visitors in your park the next resource are roads which are marked with those triangles with the road symbol in many different places and whenever you get a road you can fill in the road as a let me show you here as a straight line like this or like this in a square so each road is like one and you can make continuous roads for example for two symbols and you can also make the road turn within a square but they always have to join two edges of the same square and they can't never make intersections they can't ever cross each other you can also store roads similarly to coins here but there is also a limit of five and you can use them anytime during your turn when you store the roads okay and the last resource is excitement whenever you collect excitement marked by these kind of green uh, triangles like here for example with numbers inside you circle the amount of squares going horizontally from the top left corner as you got excitement so if you get two excitement you would circle the first two squares the third excitement if, if you later gain one excitement you circle this but you do not collect these bonuses printed here automatically you will be collecting them later so hold on to that okay one thing that's always uh, also left at the end to mention and sometimes I, I forgot during my first two solo playthroughs is that at any time you can spend two coins in order to obtain one advanced DNA one road or one security and I find it a bit weird that this is mentioned here instead of somewhere here because your eyes are more directed for more time of the game to those cards and this is for me easier to miss when it's over here but oh well okay so let's start with the game um, once you are playing the game you have to remember that the board has to be flipped to the appropriate side so there is this corner for uh, two free players and on the other side it's a four player game uh, so if it's a four player game you would have to flip this board and you have three rounds and each round has three turns and there are two action turns or action phases and a visit park phase or run park phase so you go through them one by one now let's start with the action phases now in the beginning of the action phase you start with drafting dice from the bag now for a one player game you draft six dice and i will show you why during the uh, single player explanation for two player games you draft five dice for three player games you draft seven and for a four player game you draft nine dice and after so let's say that this is a two player game so we draft five dice one two three four five and we roll them there you go so those are our results for this round 
And then starting with the first player clockwise, each player drafts one die. And if it's a two player game, then for example, I will draw this die with two security and I can already fill in two security levels onto my board. The other player, for example, will take this die, whoops, sorry, with uh, which side was that? With a road symbol and the red DNA symbol, and they take those two things, so they mark one red DNA, and they can either build one road automatically in their park or store it, okay? And don't worry about those red pips, they don't do anything right now when you are drafting those dice, and then when the second player has drafted, the order reverses, so then the second player is first to draft and he would take, for example, this one coin and he can spend it automatically on any of the specialists or on any of the buildings or store it. And he takes this die and I would take this one with the two blue DNA and I would mark two blue DNA here and this is it. No matter if we are playing a two player game, three player game or four player game, if you are doing this like so, so the first, second, third and fourth player and then back again counterclockwise, you'll be left with each player having two dice and then one die left in the middle. And this die gives this uh, resource to everybody, so each player would get one blue DNA, but each player would also get their threat level increased by three because there are three pips on this leftover die. So I would have to put one, two, three dots into my security, meaning that my security can't cope with one threat level at this moment. And this die can go back into the bag. So this is the dice drafting phase. Now, the second thing that you do is you take actions and there are, there are five actions that you can take and it's done one by one clockwise starting from the first player. So each player will be taking two actions during the game and you use one of your dice to select which action you want. And now let's go through those actions one by one. If I select this action, I can make up to four dinosaurs. And now what happens when I make dinosaurs is that I have to look here. There are costs of DNA for dinosaurs. So the plant eaters are the cheapest because they use only basic DNA. The uh, smaller carnivores are more expensive because they use one basic and one advanced DNA. And the large carnivores are most expensive because they use the advanced DNA only. And I can create up to four dinosaurs by, for example, spending one yellow and one blue. So I will cross this out, one yellow and one blue basic DNA to create an ankylosaurus, one blue and one yellow, as you can see. And I put a tick here so that I have this one dinosaur. And this enables me to put an enclosure with an ankylosaur into my park. Now you can place enclosures anywhere in your park. And this is, as you can see, for a herbivore, it's a, a two by two enclosure. So I will, for example, place it here. And you mark that this is the ankylosaurus enclosure with an A, because the A is marked in green in the name. So Triceratops would have a T and Brachiosaur would have a B. Each name of the dinosaur has a different letter marked. And now, while placing buildings, what are the rules for placing buildings? The most important thing to remember is that if you place a building, whether it's an attraction building or one of those special buildings from the cards or a, uh, an enclosure for a dinosaur, the buildings cannot touch each other even with corners and they can't touch your HQ as well, but they can touch the walls of the park and the gates as well. So this is a legal placement. And now I've built only one dinosaur right now and I get one excitement and two victory points at the end of the game. So I can circle one excitement here right now. And now three more to go because you can build four dinosaurs with this action. But well, I won't have enough DNA, but I have one blue and one red left over. So I can also create a triceratops and I tick one Triceratops for one blue and one red. I get one excitement for this one as well. And I have to build a separate enclosure for the Triceratops. And I will build it here. And Triceratops 
has a T, so we'll mark it here. So my ankylosauruses are here and the triceratopses are here. And that's it. I've spent all the DNA I could basically and I can't do any more. I would select one, the second player would select one, then I would select one and the other player would select another one. And I still have one action and let's go through all those different actions right now with this single die. So if I had chosen this action, I would be able to get two coins, spend them automatically or store them, or get two security and add the security here. Easy. If I selected this action, I would be able to take two random basic DNA or one advanced DNA and mark it for my use. If I use this action, I would gain double the effect of the die that I put here and all opponents would get one effect from those dice and this can't copy attractions. So if the die showed that an attraction can be built, whether a merch, ride or food, you couldn't copy this effect. And this one tells me that I can get free roads to build or to save here or build an attraction. And if I build an attraction in the park with the same rules that govern uh, placing other buildings, I would have to tick one of those areas so that to show that one attraction of this type is already built. But for now, I will say that I will collect free roads with this action and I will build one road two roads and I will save a third road, right? And I will do it like this. And remember that those actions are chosen interchangeably. I did two actions right now to explain it, but there is one rule that governs uh, action selecting as well. And this basic rule is that you can take an action that a player has already taken or you have already taken, but when you put a die onto another die to perform the action, you have to increase the threat in your park by the level on the die you are covering. So this one, this die has two threat level, so I would have to, if the other player wanted to make dinos, he would have to increase their level threat level by two as well, right? So this is how you can double up on spaces that, for example, other players occupy. And this continues after all players use up their dice, you put the dice back into the bag, you move this marker here, and again, you do the dice drafting, you roll the dice, each player drafts the dice, you do the actions for the second time, and after that, we've got the run the park phase. And this repeats itself three times before the game ends. Okay, so I think that the action phase is pretty clear, so let's talk about the run the park phase right now. So run the park phase goes along this track, one, two, three, four, five, and you are doing everything that you can in each of those lines. So let's start from the top. Now, if you have any of those buildings built, so you have them in the park, no matter if they're connected with a road or not, you have check marks here for those buildings, you get bonuses for those buildings in any order you want. Food buildings give you one coin to spend or to save per built building, and you can have maximum four of those, so you will get maximum four additional coins during this attraction phase. Rides give you one excitement per building built, and again, four of those maximum, and merch can give you one die to roll and take its effect automatically for every merch building built. And you perform those and the attraction phase is done for this uh, park run phase. And every player can do those things simultaneously. Then we go to the specialists. If you paid money for any kind of specialist in full, so free, free, free in every case, you would put a tick next to the specialist to show that you have him. And once you have him, you automatically perform once this lightning action that they have so here, 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 or here. And then during the run park phase, you perform this action with an arrow every single time you do a run, act, run park action and you have the specialist. So this one would give you one security, this one will give you two roads, this one allows you to make up two dinosaurs, this one allows you to destroy an attraction in order to get two money towards all 
buildings to, towards all special buildings. I will tell you about destroying stuff later on. This one gives you one money per ride in your park, etc, etc. Different ones depending on which ones you have. So you run with all of your specialists and then you're done. And then you have the number three, the Dino Tour. Now, the Dino Tour always starts at your HQ and you have to go from the HQ along a path, you have to trace a path through buildings which are connected with a road and you have no obstacles on the way and for each building you pass in this way you put an X in this building and your tour can end either at a gate if the building is neighboring a gate or there is a road leading to the gate in which case you circle this gate as well or it can end in any building just abruptly and remember X is for all the buildings so once you trace this path, put all the X's, you get one excitement for every building in which you had X's placed during this round only. And this means special buildings, attractions and also enclosures. And for each of those X's you get excitement. So I would get two excitement for now. The gate will be scored at the end of the game if you've reached the gate with your tour. So this is the Dino Tour and then you like, take a look at the excitement and you collect all the rewards that are circled on your excitement track. So in my case it would be one random basic DNA and one coin that I could spend automatically or save for later. And talking about spending coins, if I for example obtained a coin right now and it allowed me to hire the junior scientist I would be able to benefit from their, her automatic action right now, this one with the lightning, immediately, but I wouldn't be able to do her action for the specialist turn because I've already passed the specialist turn right now. However, if I obtained some money during the specialist turn and I purchased her, I would be able to uh, use her action immediately as well. The same goes for food. So if you build a building in a later phase of the run park action, you wouldn't be able to benefit from this additional building that you've built. But if you build it during the attractions phase, you would be able still to get the bonus. So you have to plan out pretty well. And then after you do the excitement, you look at your death toll. And now for every threat that's not circled by security, you mark one space on the death toll. And if you reach an exclamation mark, you have to choose a disaster that happens to your park. Now, a disaster can be anything from losing an employee or a specialist, that's what they call them in the game, when you cross them out and they are no longer, no longer useful for you. They won't provide you points at the end of the game and they don't provide the action again. But you don't lose the action with the lightning, the instant action. You don't lose that. You either lose four DNA from your collection of DNA, you either have to demolish three roads, one enclosure or one attraction. What does it mean to demolish? You basically do this and this means that right now you can't pass through here so you'd have to build a new path around everything. You can't build on a demolished building but you can build next to a demolished building. So this is a bit, bit of a difference because usually you can't build anything adjacent to a normal building but if the building is destroyed you can build in adjacency. But remember, no dino tour can pass through any destroyed area whether it's a road or a, an attraction or an enclosure. And one more thing with the disasters guys. When you're demolishing roads you just erase a road from the park. When you are demolishing attractions you erase the attraction from the park and you fill in one space on this attractions track here so as to remember that this won't give you a bonus anymore. And if you are demolishing an enclosure, you have to blank out all of the dinosaurs from this enclosure's type. So if I've demolished an A enclosure right now, I would have to blank out one ankylosaurus because there was one in this enclosure and if I made another ankylosaur, I would have to build a new enclosure for him, right? So this is it. So it kind of reorganizes your park a bit. And each of those disasters happens only twice. So if you collect too many of them, oh well, you will have to select different ones. And 
every single time when you've crossed out here or here all of the spaces somehow all the additional ones should be noted here for the end of game scoring and this is the uh, run park action and you do it three times and after those three times you tally up your points for the end of the game and now let's go to the scoring so after you did three turns like this so two action phases one run park phase repeated three times three this is a three you score the game you get two victory points per each one not blanked out herbivore that you have in your park so two times the number of dinosaurs and you have maximum four of each you get three points per every dinosaur from the purple category and you get five points for every dinosaur of the largest category and one more thing to remember is that if you are making dinosaurs that are of the more expensive categories they give you threat but also more excitement during the game when you produce them and then you get three victory points per every hired specialist each hired specialist in the corner has three victory points you get the victory point bonuses from the buildings you managed to build and they are explained in the rule book so i won't be going into detail here you get victory points from every circle gate that you managed to reach during each of your tours so usually you will be able only to have three of the gates circled because each tour has to end at a gate or a building you can't go to one gate and then bounce back to another gate you can't double back on tours as well you get the victory points for the row in which you finished on your excitement track so if your excitement finished on 22 you would get 10 points on 35 you would get 14 points you get one point for every extra excitement you have you get one point for every two dna left over rounded down you get one point negative for each uh, death toll on this box you get two points deduced for each exceeding the 20 number here and you total this up and this is your number of points at the end of the game and the player with the highest point count wins okay so this is it if you enjoyed this video and if it helped you to understand how to play dinosaur island roar and write i hope that you will appreciate it with a like subscribe to, subscribing to my channel or clicking the notification button i'm glad to be of service and check out all the other videos i have on my channel as well if you're interested in uh, learning how to play the solo version of the game right now please stay tuned for five more minutes if not thank you very much this was roar and ride by dinosaur island my name was lone vic see you in my next video have a great day let's go to explaining the solo changes here we are guys so for the solo rules right now i will just take off these dice for a moment the changes are very minimal you set up everything in the beginning of the game as is so i will just flip it right like now so one basic dna for the beginning of the game you correct the prices for buildings and the specialists also um ignore this this is an old card i'll just flip it okay you are always the first player you don't set up sheets for the automatic player you just take this ai deck you shuffle it up what happens is that during the preparation of the game you take five cards from this deck you take a look at these objectives which will give you victory points at the end of the game so for example have four merch shops or have four food or have one enclosure of each type or have three uh, specialists hired the a b and c kind or have two of each uh, attractions in my case you select three objectives out of those you place them somewhere nearby to remember about them because those will give you additional points at the end of the game you take the two remaining cards you shuffle it into the ai deck and you place the ai deck near the board and this is the only difference for the setup now during the dice drafting phase you will draft six dice one two three four five six and let's say i just rolled them and those are the results so after you roll those dice you place them in a line randomly 
like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you uncover the first card from the AI deck. And you can see that the AI will take the first die from the left and it will place it here onto the first action that's marked here. And it will take the first, second, third die and it will place it on the gain twice the die. So this is how the AI occupies spaces. And now you are left with four dice, of which you draft two per normal rule. So I would draft this one and this one, and they would give me this DNA that is on them, and I would be able later to use them for uh, taking actions. And there are two dice left. And now one of those dice will give you the resource from the die, so either one coin or one DNA, and the other one that you don't select will give you the threat if it has any. So this is the change for the drafting part. And after you choose one of those two, so for example, I will take one coin and I could spend it, then I would have to take two threat. I return those two dice to the bag and that's it. No more changes. To be honest, right now you just take your two actions and then you move on to the next phase. There are also no changes in the running the park phase. So the AI only occupies two spaces. And remember that when you are scoring, you also score for any of those objectives if you manage to complete any of them. So this is how the solo game changes in Roar and Ride the Dinosaur Island. Also, in the solo mode, please remember that there are, or please know, that there are two cards that you shouldn't use out of the specialist deck, and the instructions, the rulebook mentions those. These cards are the Insider and Chaos Theorist, and also one building card called the Petting Zoo. These three cards do not work in a solo mode, so you should remove them before playing solo. Okay guys, one more thing to mention here right now with this game is that uh, there are two modifications that you can make to the game in order to make it a bit more challenging. In the beginning of the video I've mentioned about the cards with those purple uh, icons that are the more uh, advanced cards, but also there are two rules that can make this game a bit more interesting for experienced players. The first rule is called dice blocking, which means that whenever a player places a die on an action and another player wants to use the same action covering the uh, uh, die which was below and of course taking the threat from the die below, they have to do so with a die that has a higher threat count than the die below it. So this would mean that if any player covers an action with a die that has threat 3, this action would be unavailable until the end of the turn because there is no die with threat higher than three. So this would be it. So dice blocking, this is how it works. And you can also use it in a solo player mode. And the second rule that can change the game and make it a bit more interesting is called the building and specialist draft. What this means is that instead of placing the buildings, uh, the buildings and the specialists here, you give four specialists and four buildings to each player at the beginning of the game during setup. And this is something that you won't be doing in solo mode. And from these eight cards, each player right now can choose one card, whether a specialist or a building, and pass the rest on. And you are passing on and drafting one card all the time until you have eight cards in front of you face down. The only limitation is that you have to have at least three of each kind, so you can't be drafting only buildings, right? And after you get eight, you uncover your eight cards, you take a look at them and you discard so that you have three buildings and three specialists that are your own. And this means that each player will have access to a different set of buildings and specialists during their game, which makes it far more interesting. Thank you for watching. My name was Lone Vic, and see you in other of my videos pretty soon. Thank you very much once more. Have a great day. Bye bye.